place where the mind meets the eyes and hands. I'm Tom Grissom. In this episode, I'd like to share a new creation that I've been working on. Every summer, I challenge myself to a new project. And uh, last summer, I took on the X-Carve, you can see behind me. But that presented a problem because I lost my assembly table. Uh, the X-Carve basically sits on the assembly table, so I no longer have that uh, to work on as a work surface. So I often find uh, another flat table uh, to work on. But I need a vise uh, to hold some of my work. So this summer, uh, I put some plans together on, I think, a novel new vise. Uh, based on a very old concept, two or three hundred years old, the Moxon style vices are very simple devices. And I've seen a number of them on YouTube. Uh, most people use uh, bar clamps and, uh, or, or spatial threaded pipe and involves some metal working. Sometimes you have to uh, you know, drill and tap some uh, screws and bolts to bolt it to your workbench. So I wanted a simple uh, version of that. Uh, I'm an, a lifelong educator and a hobbyist woodworker, and one of the movements that's sweeping across America's schools right now uh, is the maker movement, or sometimes referred to as maker spaces, where schools are basically rediscovering shop class, and every good shop needs a good vice. So here is my attempt to solve one of those common problems. Uh, in searching out on YouTube, I saw a couple of YouTube videos where they used a barbell uh, uh, set to actually use the, uh, the Acme thread on the barbells. So I thought that would work with the long barbells, but I think it would work just as easily with a smaller handheld set. So I went out and purchased a set. These were easily under $20, and what I am after is this one inch Acme threaded rod right here. This is kind of the secret uh, to, to make this work. So I had three criteria when I started this project. Number one, it had to work. It needed to securely hold uh, the work that I wanted it to hold. Uh, number two, it needed to be easy to make out of simple tools and simple materials uh, with tools uh, commonly found in the average shop. And number three, it needed to be affordable. So I found a combination, uh, this is a little bit of divergent or lateral thinking, thinking outside the box. Uh, I put together a little prototype, made some uh, slices of uh, plywood. So this is my first prototype that I came up with. This is simply three pieces of plywood uh, with holes drilled in both ends. And uh, this measures four inches by 16 inches long. The uh, middle section of this actually has a one inch notch on each end, and I'll show you what that's for in just a moment. Uh, but that makes this one 18 inches long. And then the front vise is also 16 inches long. So very simple. All you need uh, to complete this project is to cut your material to dimension. And then I just used a one inch Forstner bit because we were using one inch uh, Acme threaded rods and I drilled the holes in each end. Now to put this together, very simple. Let me just take one of these spin locks off. One of the reasons I like these uh, weight sets they're very quick to come off. The Acme threads spin on and off very quickly. They were designed for, you know, weights to put on and off. So this is kind of a perfect solution here uh, for this. So there's one side. This is the back side. This basically is to balance out uh, this Moxon style vise. So we'll just put this one up here on front. Spin that one on. Get it started here. Once they're started, they spin on very quickly. So there's that one. Now then, the next thing I'm going to put on the back jaw, and this has got the notch in. I'm actually going to use those notches to secure it to uh, the work table. So let me take off both spin collars. And the reason I call it modular is you can change these jaws out to whatever size or dimensions that you want. So it's very, very easy to use. Pop that on there, put that on, and then I will put the front jaw. This is what actually forms the vise. So let me put my spin collars on, spin that one on there. Put the second one on over here, spin that one on there. And we're in business. It's that easy. Uh, let me go ahead and loosen this up because spinning these collars in and out is what is going to adjust the spacing of the jaw. And this particular prototype uh, I was making to cover about 80 or 90 percent of the work that I do. I typically work with one by sixes, uh, you know, sometimes two by fours, two by sixes, uh, but I wanted something to easily secure uh, my work. So I'm going to bring this out to the edge and I'm going to clamp it to this work surface. So I've got it out to the edge. I've got a couple of S style clamps. I can very quickly put this on to secure it. So let me grab it right here. There's one side. I'm grab my second one. 
I'm just using these notches over here to secure it. Spin that one on. Okay, so I've got it securely uh, fastened down to my bench with the clamps. And let's say that I wanted to cut some dovetails or I wanted to saw this board. Since I have it out on the edge, as, t as is typical with uh, mocks and vices, I can open up this jaw, let me spin this out, put this in here, and because the length here is off the edge, I can control it up and down. Just spin that on there, spin the other side, put that on there, put the twist, put the whammy to it, and then that is securely held. That's not going to go anywhere. So now if I had a dovetail saw, I could saw my dovetails, or maybe I needed to do some sanding, or maybe I wanted to use a 2 before. I mentioned this particular prototype handles 2 before, so there's nothing more common than an inch and a half by three and a half inch 2 by 4. So let me spin these locks out a little bit, adjust it, spin this one in, and now then I've got my 2 before locked in here, and now I could take a saw, sand, whatever, whatever it is I might need to do. Now, a couple of design flaws uh, showed up pretty immediately whenever I developed this prototype. Number one is uh, whenever I really start cranking down on these collars, since this is three quarter inch plywood, it bows. It'll bow in and bow out a little bit. And then secondly, when I developed this first prototype, I put my holes a little bit above center. This is four inches tall. Uh, so they're not perfectly at two inches on center. I thought that might give me a little bit more grip or bite. Uh, so in my next one, the next version, which I'll share on the next video, uh, I made them out of two befores and I centered these holes right in the center of this three and a half inch uh, two before. That solved the racking problem. And then the thickness of the two before, that stiffened it up and uh, made it better. I have seen a lot of uh, people use like exotic woods, um, you know, maple or oak or purple heart or, you know, some of the, the more exotic woods. They want the hardwood for the jaws. However, I'm finding in some of my testing here that just a regular spruce or fir or pine works very well. It's a little bit softer and gives a very nice grip and uh, that's working well. In fact, a lot of mocks and vices they used to line with leather uh, anyway to uh, get a little bit more secure, secure grip. So that's it. A very simple, easy to make and affordable vice and I encourage you to go out there and give it a try. So until next time, this is Tom Grissom. Keep on learning and making.